Hey everyone, this is Austin Schur here with We Write About Music, and today I'm speaking with Alexis, who is much better known as XO Lex. She has just released a fantastic new track called Ain't Buying It, and I am super excited to talk to her all about it. I want to yeah. thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day, life, and schedule to do this. How are you doing today? I'm great. I'm really excited to be here and to tell everyone about my single dropping on March 17th, and just yes. to give them a little you know, behind the scenes of who I am and my life. So I'm excited. That's what this is all about. It is called Literally. We Talk About Music. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Exactly. Um, I've had the pleasure of listening to the song probably four or five times now. It's it's honestly, it's gotten better with each listen. But one thing <laughs> I would love to know is what is it about? Like I can only do so much on my end by connecting the dots. Mm -hmm. But that's why you're here. What is this song about? It's crazy because I was actually sitting in my aunt's basement like it was just going to be an off day for me. I was just going to relax and just chill. But my emotions, I'm an empath and sure. my emotions were just so high. And when I, that happens to me, I like to write. And unfortunately, I got just got done talking with my sister who just got out of a toxic relationship. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to write about how I feel right now just witnessing that experience. And yeah. so I came up with Ain't Buying It um, through a toxic relationship from my sister. So that's really honestly cool. kind of rare, I feel. Not many people write about relationships that aren't theirs <laughs> or at least from their perspective. So I kind of like that. A lot of people are like, do you, are all your songs about you? Like have what, what you've been through? And I'm like, honestly, like majority <laughs> of the time it is about what I've been through, but sure. I wrote songs about what, I, how I felt in other situations that had nothing to do with me, like nothing. And I'm that's like, awesome. cause at that point in time, like everyone's felt that type of way, you know, felt disrespected or anything like that. And so I'm like, you know what, we need a new country banger, like before he cheats by Carrie Underwood, but like right. Gen Z version. So I was like, exactly. I'm doing it. I'm going with it. There you go. Well, honestly, it, it really does work. Um, it's it's so much better to have real songs after real situations rather than just like these boring, manufactured, clearly made up examples. Yeah. It's tough though. It's like you're an artist, so you're living your normal life, but you mm -hmm. take you take all this in just all day long. And it's like, Could this yeah, be content for a song. Could that be a song? And it's yeah. like how how do you balance that within your own life? It's weird to me because personally, like, you know, one of my outlets is, you know, music or the gym. Sure, sure. But, and when I don't, like, when I want to write about something that happened to me and I can't create it, like, because I can really get songs together within, like, five minutes. Like, that's how passionate I am with it. And it's just, yeah. like, it just writes itself. I'll know instantly when I'm like, oh, I can't write about this. Like I have a roadblock. I'm maybe not healed from it or, yeah. you know, you know, some, some other obstacles in the way. And then I just like, <laughs> go use another outlet, which is like meditating, yoga, gym. So I, I, it's a nice balance with my life, but majority of the time, like if I, when I feel disrespected or just like, when I get disrespected, I can write a song within five minutes. Yeah. I really can Right. Yeah. It's like you never want that to happen, but at the same time, you might just get a song written about you. So, yeah. <laughs> which is so, kind of cool. Yeah. Um, I love that though. So okay, this song itself, besides the message, just sounds great. Like, do you have people helping you out making these songs in terms of production process? Like, what yes. does it look like on the back end? <laughs> well, I've been a singer-songwriter for about two and a half years now. Okay. And um, I recently moved to Nashville and I got connected with literally my guardian like my angel yeah i mean that's the place to be. yeah and his name is bobby terry he's a producer singer song a singer songwriter he's just everything you could ever ask for garth brooks right hand man nice. so like when i work with him it's super nice because he just creates the melody for me and then i'm just we go off we get the hook we get um, the verses the ad libs all of it but for this song specifically i worked with ellie may um, she is a singer songwriter from Idaho mm -hmm. and she was actually on the voice and she came over to my aunt. I literally texted her the other day, like, come over, we got to write a song. And she came over and we wrote it. So I've worked with Ellie Mae and Bobby on this specific song. But since then, cause I wrote this like eight months ago. Yeah. Um, we've, we've wrote, we've written at least like, four other songs in the span oh, nice. of me being there. And then I just moved to Nashville. So I was flying in there right. to specifically write with Bobby Terry so that 
Though that's pretty that's the team I have right now. I usually work with Bobby Terry or Greg Becker, who's another singer songwriter. And it's been so great. I'm I'm so blessed for the people that I've been able to, you know, meet along the way because yeah. it's not it's not easy. You know what I mean? Like No, no one said it was. And there's no. and I always say there's a there's no step one, two, or three. It's just, hey, you wanna do this? You gotta figure it out on your own. There's yeah. No guidebook. Um, so you're fresh to Nashville. How has that transition been? Um, Nashville. So to be honest, when I first started going there, I've only experienced Broadway. So I was like, and I love yeah. Broadway. No, no, no. Hey, listen, any tourists like that, yeah. that's just where you go. It's just like the Vegas strip, you know, if you yeah. only go to Vegas and experience the strip. Totally. And I lived in Vegas last year too. And I lived in the suburbs, which is a completely whole different life than yeah. the strip, right? So at first I was just like, oh, Nashville, like Broadway, like, you know, it's like where I'm performing, you know? So it doesn't, it's not to me like, ooh, a vacation, you know what I mean? So once I got to really experience and like, just go sightseeing in Nashville, now I appreciate and adore it. And I actually like love living there, um, which is a really big change. Everyone's like, I did not think you'd like it. And I'm like, here we are. Just yeah. I mean, listen, there's a reason. Yeah. There's a reason people are flocking there. It's not always yeah. because of the music, but it's just become like, you know, it's, it's tough. At least in the U S you want to go where you can have a life and like, no, be able to afford things. Seriously. Which is, like, seriously on, you know? Me being there. I just, I just already have met so many like creatives as in like artists, videographers, photographers. Yeah. It's crazy how, much talent is in Nashville and I'm just mm -hmm. so I'm just so inspired like that's why I like being there because I'm like oh they're working 24 hours a day I'll work I'll, I'll work more you know what I'm saying like I that's, want to that's be what it's about a part of I want to be like a legend in a sense like not even a yeah. legend as like a country music star but a legend as in just like helping people healing people yeah. like educating people on things that I've I know I went through in my life to educate people on right um that I just want to leave a mark because especially in today's world, like you, it's really hard to connect with people, you know? So I just want to be that like middleman of connecting people because I love it. It's still there, you know? Totally. No, that's the attitude to have. Seriously. Don't, don't change that because really yeah. like that's what makes, listen, I mean, you of all people know how many people try to be a singer or songwriter or do things, but yeah. it really takes a specific motivated type of person to actually do it because of all the hurdles that are in your way. And it never yeah. stops unless you like, you know, you hit the big time and it's just, there, there's a lot going on. I love that though. Yeah. It was wild. Cause like, I think God sends me a lot of, you know, trials and errors to go totally. through and it, it was just so funny the other day I, I read um, my daily prayer book, you know, and it was just like, awesome. Hey, you're going to get hit with this and this and this, but it will, you will stay consistent on your path. As long as you stay consistent on your path, you will, you will be, you know, granted what, what you're like doing that for. Right. Yep. And right after I did that, I, I valeted my car, valet totaled my car totaled it like literally fifteen thousand dollars worth damages right yeah. then after that i was like what do i do i'm like carlos i get old over you know it was just mm -hmm. a lot like you know exactly what yep. the, that day said like you're gonna get wham wham whammy yeah well life <laughs> like, throws you these animals. struggles I was like i'm stranded like yeah it was just funny it was a funny little you can laugh about it now, now that you're done yeah. dealing with it. But in the moment, you know, life sucks a little bit. Oh my gosh. In the moment, in the moment I was laughing too. I'm like, oh, this is what you made. This is what yep. you Yeah. Yeah. Here's another song. <laughs> oh, Literally. Um, okay. More, more on this song though. <laughs> Obviously it is very much rooted in country music, but I've also found through my many listens that there's a lot more going on. Like there's yeah. influence and inspiration. How would yeah. you describe the song to someone who hadn't? listen to you or your music before um <clears throat> well this specific song in general yeah. you know it's my first single dropping as a country artist yeah so I feel like if I were to tell people I'd be like if you've ever if you're done with people's bullshit listen to this song just listen to the song because this is the <laughs> I year, love that that's a, hey that's a great year way people are not tolerating it anymore like I am buying it you know 
we make uh-huh. amends, we go on our separate ways and we're, it's a, it's a peaceful life, right? Yep. Like a lot of people are just so addicted to toxicity and chaos. And it's like, yes. I mean, if you're still, if you're still doing, if you're still addicted to that, still listen to the song, maybe it'll inspire you to really leave, you know, but that's what I would say. It's just, it's a cheating banger, you know, Yeah. like, and it's, this goes yeah. for both, this goes for both women and men, like, Cause I've seen right. both get disrespected. And so that's why I'm like, you can cheat, you can lie, like, but you ain't going to change my mind, you know? So more yeah. to live by right there. <laughs> um, you've, you've explained a little bit, a look into your process in terms of like, I live these moments and I can write a song in five minutes, but is it always like that? Do you ever set out time for yourself to like, I don't know, reflect yeah. or experience? Like, how does it work for you in that sense? Well, I, so country music, I've been writing since I was a little girl. And I think since I grew up in a small town, my dad's a farmer, like I grew up around country. And I think writing country songs is much easier for me because, you know, that's just who I am to my core. But I actually started off R&B soul and I would set aside time to write those songs, um, which you could check out on all platforms. Yeah, yeah. they're, They're super great too. Um, but that would take a little bit more time because I would have to switch my country rhythm and the way I write verses to R&B soul type of vibe. So it was a little bit different with the structure, I would say, but now it's like, I seriously go to the studio and write a song, write a hook within 10 minutes when I have a melody. Like it just, we have so many songs on the way. We just did a Folsom Prison covered uh by johnny cash awesome. little jazzy soul vibe which is very cool i'm so excited for that drops six weeks after this drop and okay. then we have another song called rebel child which is personally i think the best song i've ever written um and that'll All be dropping right. six weeks after Folsom prison and we we just ju- we just wrote two other songs last week so i mean i'm hoping to have an album out by june Jeez. All right. Yeah. Well, I think you can do it. That actually brings me to my next thing here. And like, we can talk about other stuff too, but so we're right at the beginning of March. It still very much feels like the beginning of the year. There's so much time left, like anything could happen. What does the year look like for you? Like, what are some lofty goals that you'd like to potentially hit? Yes. So we've, I've talked about this with my, my agents and I was, as you personally, should. <laughs> personally, I, I want to see growth, whether that be touring with somebody at the end of the year yeah. um my fan base you know growing to the point where they're not just like wanting to see what I'm doing but they're actually interacting with me yeah. you know like they really hey when's your next show blah 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 I also want to play a lot more gigs I come back from Ireland next weekend and I play in Nashville the 18th the 17th and 18th nice um and so I'll premiere you know my songs and stuff which is really cool but ideally I just want to I want to make an impact like on my XOLEX career where it's engaging followers, touring with somebody and putting all my songs out. I am holding on to 60 plus songs. And a lot of people are like, why have you not dropped? Da, 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 da. And I'm like, I would love to drop. It yep. just, you can't just drop though anymore. No, you like can't. talent, talent gets you nowhere. You need to have marketing strategy you have a marketing team you have to have strategic you have to go into this so strategic it's like insane to me and I and I'm learning you know two and a half years in and I now know I can't just drop a song and be like it'll go crazy because it's good no if (laughs) only if only it were that easy that's the thing is like it's it's easy and it's a problem it's like you as an artist can have so much talent you can release the best song ever but there's yeah. so many songs released on a daily basis. It gets lost into the mix. If you don't build the hype and contact yeah. these yeah. people and do this and do that, it's like it gets lost and all of your hard work seemingly goes down the drain, which isn't fair to anyone involved. So yeah, feel yeah. But on, on a plus, it's good to know that you have so much in the bank because at yeah. the same time, it's like, I mean, you know, so many artists struggle with writer's block and creative yeah. block and I don't know what to do. Yeah. Having too much music and being selective, that's that's all you can hope for. Yeah, and actually I did have writer's block probably a year ago to the point where I didn't write. I was I was a lost, and that's why I'm like, I had an interview yesterday and the, the guy was like, 
you're just so real and so honest. Like, what made you be like this? Like, because, you know, a lot of people just put on a show to be a certain type of way. <laughs> yes, that is <laughs> And true. I'm like, I just am unapologetically myself in a respectful way, you yeah. know, because, and I think everyone should be that. Like, you shouldn't put yourself into a little tiny room because of, like, how do I explain this? Like, you can't put yourself in a little tiny box because, oh, TikTok says to do this. Instagram says to do this. Oh, this model does, does this. Like, you need yeah. to just do what you want to do, what inspires you, what makes you feel good. I agree. And it comes be through. unapologetic about it, you know? Yep. Um, the realness translates, and believe it or not, people actually focus to the non-manufactured feel. Like, yeah. there's nothing better. I mean, listen, I review music for a living, but I also listen to music for personal fun obviously and mm -hmm. it's like you can tell immediately what is real and what is not like you be just absolutely. you just become in tune with it and uh, no, absolutely yeah it's a tough thing to do but you know and that's why cool. when I put my heart and soul like into the song like I'm really I put myself in that position of like how my sister was in so when I was writing yeah. I really tried to feel like that was me that I got disrespected and cheated you know I really tried to put myself in that situation and yeah. I think it's important <clears throat> for people to feel these emotions because that's what about that's what human is being about it, it sucks sometimes you know feeling that's that heartbreak that anxiety but the worst the fact that we can feel that that's crazy like that's literally crazy to me yep it's part of life I love it but um, seriously I'm not joking the way that you explained it is like that is it that is what yeah. it's all about um, I have one more question for you here. Mm -hmm. I, I basically want to know, well, for the person that is going to discover you from this, what is an opening message that you'd like to say to them before they listen to your music for the first time? Um, I just hope they feel connected to me in a sense. Like, I feel like, you know, even if you don't know me, I hope you listen to my music and you feel like you know me. And when you've been through those type of situations that I've written about that you don't feel alone, because at the end of the day, that's truly why I write music in the first place. It's a, it's an outlet for me and I want to release it to the world so other people can listen to it and have it kind of be an outlet for them. Because I have certain artists that I listen to and I put it on when I'm, I'm like, I want to talk mad shit <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry. Hey, you know, you can say whatever you want about somebody, you know, like I want to feel yeah. all those emotions and I put on SZA I put on her you know I put on all those things and <laughs> sure, I'm feeling sure. it I'm like yes yes like that's how I want people to put yeah. me on there. like I want to put on XLX because I want to feel that you know I, I agree I also like you know not to interrupt you but I think there is not too much space or it's not too far away from R&B and country music it's yeah. very much the same tone and it depending is. on what you're talking about it's really just like you know different instruments uh, no seriously right yeah and that's why wow. I'm like hopefully that's an easy transition yeah my goal is always to you know kind of do what Miley Cyrus and Taylor Swift did you know go into country mm -hmm. bring in bring in your roots and then show the world like you're you're a cultured country singer like you're yep. you can do the R&B you can do the pop you can do the EDM and I, I love thoroughly that. love all genres so yeah I mean I rapped I rapped awesome. before. Like it's just so funny to me because people are like, "You rap? Like you rap?" I'm like, "Oh, I have, I have five songs in my Dropbox of me rapping," and they're like, oh. "Can we listen?" And then I put it on. They're like, "You actually rap?" And I'm like, "Amazing." Just in me, so, I guess. Yeah, you're still very much at the beginning right now, so it's just like you don't know what's gonna happen. You don't know what people are gonna take to. You can do whatever you want. Like you're still That's making true. a name for yourself. And you're yeah. obviously talented in the sense that you can do a little bit of everything. So just do what you want. You're the one yeah. spending the hard time and the efforts, like do whatever. Um, anyway, I want to thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to do this. It has been a pleasure to speak with you. Mm -hmm. Please let me plug your music for you one more time here. Uh, by the time this comes out, Ain't Buying It will be out. We will have links in our articles that you can listen and share and follow along and do all that fun stuff. But it also sounds like there's a ton more in the works and on the way. So it's never, never been a better time to pay attention <laughs> and see what's going on. Yes. Yep. March 17th, guys. And thank you for having um, me, Austin. It was been, it's been a pleasure talking to you, too. So. You're welcome. We'll speak soon. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. And uh, you too. yeah, take care for now. See you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.